time has come to once again answer life's most savory question. Whose cuisine reigns supreme? This is Iron Chef America. A delectable Japanese tradition has taken root in American soil. We have been graced with the establishment of our very own kitchen stadium, where our nimble chairman has brought together the pungent flavors of East and West. It is here where the best of the best from around the world meet and face the ultimate gourmet challenge. Hi, Alton Brown here. I've got the very best seat here in uh, our chairman's little culinary thunderdome, where uh, the finest kitchen knots of the modern era will come together and battle to the death. <laughs> All right, they don't actually battle to death, but you know they hug and shake hands. But somebody's going to eat five plates full of humble pie, and I'm going to be here to watch. So please allow me to introduce a veritable pantheon of culinary giants. Your very own Iron Chefs, America. Iron Chef Bobby Flay. Iron Chef Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef Mario Batali. And Iron Chef Kat Cora. In mere moments, one of these iron chefs will be pitted against our challenger, who thirsts to discover our secret ingredient and enter the heat of battle here in Kitchen Stadium. Today's challenger is a fixture on the Seattle food scene. Though he was not formally trained as a chef, he has gone on to win the Oscar of the culinary world, the James Beard Award for his book, Seattle Kitchen. He currently owns four of Seattle's best known restaurants, including the Palace Kitchen, Chef Tom Douglas. Douglas, welcome. You honor us with your presence. Thank you. At first glance, how does Kitchen Stadium feel? Just like my home kitchen. Excellent. Very happy to have you here. Thank you. Each battle has a unique recipe with a flavor and essence all its own. And so on this day at Kitchen Stadium, I have decided that our challenger, Chef Douglas, will face off against Iron Chef Morimoto! Masaharu Morimoto opened his first restaurant at the age of 25 in Hiroshima, Japan. He later sold it and came to the United States, where he has been associated with some of New York's finest establishments, and now owns his own restaurant, Morimoto, in Philadelphia. Always presenting his culinary creations with such mastery, he explains that going to a restaurant is like going to the theater. On one level, Iron Chef Morimoto against Chef Douglas might just look like, okay, a couple of fish experts are getting together to battle. Uh, but I have to tell you, we've got very, very different approaches, different sides of the Pacific. Iron Chef Morimoto, formally trained. Douglas is not. I think we're, uh, we're in for a, uh, a fiery battle here. But there is one more ingredient to this battle, our secret ingredient, the theme on which our chefs will offer their succulent variations. Today's secret ingredient is... Wild Salmon! Ah. So now, America, with an open heart and an empty stomach, I say unto you in the words of my own... And Battle Salmon is on. Okay, fellas, let's go get them. And we have got some beautiful salmon here today. Not only are these uh, uh, salmon, they are indeed a Chinook salmon, also known as King Salmon. Uh, these were uh, line caught or trolled uh, off of the, uh, the southern coast of Alaska, uh, and not very long ago either. Uh, you can recognize them as King Salmon because uh, you'll see that it's got uh, black uh, lips uh, and, and uh, mostly a, a black tongue. We see our Chef Morimoto breaking down that salmon. I'm sure he's done this about 60 uh, gajillion times, and that was just, just this week. Uh, yeah. An interesting fact uh, about our Chef Morimoto, he never copies himself. Every dish he creates here in Kitchen Stadium is one of a kind, an original in every way. Of course, he draws from a, a rich Japanese culinary tradition for inspiration, and his creations are all the more impressive when you consider the complexity involved in executing each dish. 
Over on the challenger side. Hey, Alton. Hey, Chef, how, how you doing? There you can see him removing the very front collar section of the filet, which he might be saving, maybe not. Yep. It all depends. Just about every part of the salmon is edible, even inside the head. I'm getting the scales off these collars, too. Boom. Eat those. Ah, so he's saving uh, the collar to prepare later. Interesting. You know, both of these chefs use techniques from opposite sides of the Pacific, but they both work with a lot of seafood, so it makes it an even playing field. If we get fish for our special ingredient, I would think Morimoto would have the edge because of his... The Japanese culture is all about fish. Hopefully my edge is in letting the, the natural flavor come out, not, not doing too much to it. There is a, a lot happening here already in Kitchen Stadium, mostly fabricating these fish. To find out more details about what's going on, let's go to my friend on the floor, Kevin Brosh. Kevin? Over on the challenger side, we have some young coconuts out. Mark is working with those. Uh, we have a curing mixture being created of um, cayenne pepper, uh, some salt, and brown sugar. Over on the Iron Chef side, we have some red beets out that uh, are going to be juiced oh, soon. Yeah. And those, those are not sugar beets. Those are uh, just standard, uh, standard red beets, from what I can tell. Uh, and we see our chef Morimoto deboning that large side of salmon. Uh, on the challenger side, he's, uh, uh, Chef Tom Douglas has taken one of these Chinook heads and put it into a pot on the stove top. I see a saute pan filled with uh, some star anise, and uh, we have some salmon skin being spiced right now by one of uh, Tom Douglas' sous chefs. Salmon skin is, as far as I'm concerned, the tastiest fish skin there is. And challenger, Chef Tom Douglas, deftly skinned that entire filet just a bit ago. Now back on the Iron Chef side, Iron Chef Morimoto is cutting one of those large salmon pieces into filets with the skin still on. It'll be interesting to see how he cooks those. Uh, you know, maybe he'll, he'll uh, try to crisp that skin in some way. Now, back on the challenger side, those coconuts that Kevin mentioned earlier are still being opened. Those, those coconuts already have been cut out of their, uh, their outer husk. And now they're only having to break open that inner nut to remove the liquid in the meat. Tom Douglas just took one of these sides of salmon, put it into the convection oven with some uh, sesame seeds and simple salt and pepper. And right now it looks like Tom Douglas throwing some wood chips into one of the uh, woks on his side of the kitchen. Um, I'd love to know what kind of uh, wood chips that he's going to be using for smoking in that pear wok. So if you happen to... Wood. What's that? Pear wood from pear. the northwest. Pear wood from the northwest. Uh, not, not a wood that I, living in the south, would have ever uh, smoked with before. I see there are a couple of uh, pressure cookers um, up over on uh, Iron Chef Morimoto's uh, side. Mas, mas. I saw Iron Chef Morimoto's sous chef Makoto uh, put potatoes in one of those just a few minutes ago. Uh, now, Iron Chef Morimoto has taken some of that salmon and sliced it very thinly. Very thin. Well, you know, you think it's sashimi? He's got to be doing something. He's either making sashimi or sushi. Makoto. Makoto. Get the truffle oil and soy sauce, please. Iron Chef Morimoto keeping a tight ship on his side. To that, uh, to that salmon head on the challenger side, Alton, just to bring up to date on that, some galangal has been added, as well as lemongrass, spring onion, and some chilies and coconut water. Well, it looks like uh, uh, Tom Douglas has got absolutely no fear of uh, heading to the other side of the Pacific from the, the one he lives on. Lemongrass, uh, frequently used in Thai cuisine, of course. Uh, he must be making a stock or, or a broth for one of his dishes. Uh, Iron, Iron Chef Morimoto working with a syringe right now while uh, Makoto, his sous chef, is working, uh, has some wood chips on the uh, on the burner. Okay, I see uh, uh, Morimoto sucking up. I, I never saw what went into that bowl. Yeah, you have any info on that? Truffle juice, Elton. Truffle juice, and he's injecting that Whoa. into the meat. That's something new uh, we've never seen before from the Iron Chef. I don't remember seeing uh, Iron Chef Morimoto with a syringe before. No. You know, maybe we shouldn't let him have one. He's having too much fun. On the challenger side, uh, sous chef Eric uh, has some uh, fava beans out with him right now. Prior to that, he was working on, uh, on a mixture of yogurt, uh, shiso, um, tamarind, and rice vinegar. Also some honey in there as well. All right, smoked salmon's in. Let's keep an eye on it. So um, challenger Tom Douglas has sprinkled some sugar and salt onto some salmon. And right now it looks like he's laying it into that wok. Uh, to yep, be smoked smoker, right now. The smoker, he's got that's basically a pizza pan with a Alton, bunch of holes drilled in it. can you read what I'm saying to you? Uh, yes. I will meet you after <laughs> battle for tall beer. No, Where's my oh. martini? So he's got those salmon pieces in the smoker with the pear wood chips. And they also know that the Challenger has lightly salted salmon in the convection oven and a stock with salmon heads, uh, the langle and lemongrass in the works. The Iron Chef has thinly sliced salmon fillets that he's laid out. Uh, he also has some larger fillets with a skin on, and he has injected truffle juice into one large piece of fish. The heat is on here in Kitchen Stadium, and we'll get back to the action when Iron Chef America returns.
Well, welcome back. This is Iron Chef America and Battle Salmon, uh, King Salmon to be exact, is raging on here between Iron Chef Morimoto and challenger uh, Tom Douglas. In Iron Chef Morimoto's kitchen, the beets that were laid out have been juiced. Uh, the fillets of salmon have been seasoned with thyme and bay leaves and placed in the smoker along with some smoldering wood chips. Uh, and sous chef Omai blanched cement and pureed it. On the challenger side, the seasoned salmon skin went into the oven between those sheet pans uh, to keep it flat as it crisps. And Chef Douglas also made some very thin skinless slices of salmon that sous chef Mark then dredged in a curing mixture of salt, pepper, and brown sugar. We'll have to keep an eye out and see where that ends up. Chef Douglas, okay. Iron Chef Morimoto, fine culinary minds to be sure, but they are not the only culinary minds in this kitchen stadium. We've got uh, three more of them, and to introduce them, Kevin Brosh. Ladies and gentlemen, Alton, good evening. Con Benoit, here come the judges. First, all the way from Huntington, West Virginia, she's been cooking since she was four years old and is a self-proclaimed food enthusiast. She's also the co-creator of OliveAndPeach.com, and she received her culinary education from the most prestigious institution of them all, her grandmother, the vivacious Katie Lee Joel. Next, we welcome the far-ranging, fast-thinking author of Entangling My Chopsticks, a culinary sojourn in Kyoto. Her work speaks to the power of food in our lives, Victoria Abbott Riccardi. Finally, a good friend of Iron Chef America and a fine writer for Food Artist Magazine of Japan, Akiko Katayama. Well, thanks, Kevin. With 38 minutes left in the battle, let's get back down to the action. I'm uh, looking at what sous chef Omai is cutting up over there on his board. It looks like he's uh, tourneying some small fingerling potatoes, frequently used in, in boiling or steaming. Uh, it also looks like he has some maitake mushrooms, asparagus, and some carrots out. Uh, the salmon that was in the curing mixture on the challenger side is now on a draining rack uh, there, so some of the moisture of the fish can drain away. He's trying to pull moisture out of the fish yeah, he's calling to it change a, his texture. He's calling it a quick cure. A quick cure, absolutely. Okay. What? Oh hey. my goodness. Ice cream man. Yeah. There we go. That was the uh, beet juice. That was cream. the beet the juice. Beet to, that, juice. Uh, to that beet juice, there was a sheet of uh, gelatin and some simple syrup added. Okay, a sheet of gelatin which was dissolved? Yes. So the Iron Chef is making a sorbet. So in the walk on the Grater. challenger side, we have some cornstarch dusted Grater. salmon spines Grater. that are frying up right now in salmon the Salmon spine again. The Iron Chef has got uh, one dish out here with some uh, candied or crystallized ginger, uh, star anise, uh, some peppercorns, uh, some, uh, some cassia, or someone calls cinnamon. Uh, the Iron Chef took those thin slices of salmon that I thought would be sashimi and dipped them in brandy. Now he's got them in that sugar curing mixture, and then he's uh, cutting up some slab bacon right now. I don't know that I remember ever seeing our Chef Morimoto work with bacon. I may be wrong about that. Okay, so Tom Douglas grating some ginger, taking the juice from that ginger and adding it to the salmon collars. Uh, there is something incredibly bright and green in a squeeze bottle over there by the uh, the, the cooktop. That's called uh, soap. That's soap. Excellent, yeah. Chef. Thank you so very much. Very important ingredient in the kitchen in the, in the 2000s. You know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm all about having the sanitation covered. Um, well, now that I've uh, humiliated myself with the, uh, the, the soap down there, I think I'll go up to the judges and see if they'll bail me out. Uh, let, let's start in the in the middle with Victoria. How are you today, Victoria? Actually, I'm, I'm a little nervous about the beet sorbet or ice cream and salmon. That, that sounds very intimidating, but um, they, they seem to be equal in terms of knowing their way with fish, so it'll be very interesting to see. Katie, let's move down to you, to you. Welcome to Iron Chef America. What do you have on your mind this afternoon as you watch this action unfold? Well, I'm pretty interested in the wood chips. The smell right now, I feel like I'm at a gourmet bonfire. And I'm also really interested in what uh, the challenger, Douglas, is doing with the coconuts. I love coconuts, so we'll see what that turns into. Okay, well, we certainly will see that. Let's move down to Akiko. What's on your mind? Well, knowing uh, Mr. Morimoto is a uh, more Japanese side, but very creative. But um, I just learned um, Mr. Douglas has a lot of restaurants. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the variation of different you know, techniques and cuisine. Right. Well, you're right. Uh, the chefs come from different parts of the world. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. And thank you, Akiko. Um, I see some salmon headed into the food processor on the Iron Chef side. Uh, what else is in there, Kevin? The heavy cream and some salt and pepper. Over on the challenger side, uh, Tom Douglas keeps adding to his collars, um, which are currently sitting right now in the salamander. He added some great Washington State Chardonnay. He added some orange juice, some orange zest, some salt and pepper. And Chef Douglas is also getting ready to bring those spines, those deep fried salmon spines out of the wok. Yum. Just pass those right over. Come and get them. Save me one, Chef. 
We see Iron Chef Morimoto has the bacon and the salmon spine section cooking in the casserole dish. You know, uh, he may add uh, stock to that for a broth. I'm just guessing. So, so no, yes, yes, it'll be soup. And there you have it. Okay. We're getting an ice cream check on the Iron Chef side. Just uh, checking to see how that is setting up. He doesn't want to uh, overchurn that sorbet. Sangolera. Ah, hot potato. Hot potato. Makoto. Makoto. Uh, those hot potatoes must be the ones from the pressure cooker. Of course, uh, Iron Chef Morimoto's kitchen, always very organized. His people are always very tight. But I have to say that, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of challengers come and go in Kitchen Stadium. Chef Douglas looks very calm. For halfway through the battle, I think he gets the calmness award. Chef Douglas now squeezing some limes into a very small little pack. 30 minutes have elapsed. 30 minutes have elapsed, which means, guess what? You've got 30 more. Chef Douglas taking apart some shallots or shallots, depending on what side of the world you hail from. Aha! The beet sorbet is emerging from the ice cream maker on the Iron Chef's side. That will probably head into the freezer to harden. Uh, the Iron Chef also has some of that brandy-soaked salmon in the sugar and star anise mixture, and his potatoes uh, have been mashed through a food press. And the challenger chef, Tom Douglas, has his fried salmon skeleton plated. He has Chardonnay marinated salmon collar in the salamander and some salmon in a quick cure mixture on a drying rack. The cooking continues as the competition reaches a boiling point here on Iron Chef America. Welcome to Iron Chef America. We're back with Battle Salmon, which is raging on between uh, Tom Douglas and Iron Chef Morimoto. In this battle, in the Iron Chef's kitchen, some asparagus, mushroom, and broccoli have been blanched. Uh, some Japanese tomatoes and some sudache have been cut up. And Iron Chef Morimoto uh, loaded his pressure cooker with, you guessed it, salmon. Uh, the challenger, the Chef Douglas, still has the large sesame seasoned salmon pieces in the convection oven. The star anise has been toasted along with some cardamom. Uh, some blood oranges have been cut and the fava beans have been blanched. We have 23 minutes left in this battle. And, you know, Tom Douglas has not brought fear with him today. This body doesn't have room for fear. There's no room for fear here, but uh, we often do see it in the uh, kitchen stadium. And if I had to eat that cutting board full of chilies, I'd have a belly full of fear too, among other things. So let's check in with Iron Chef Morimoto, who always appears fearless in competition. That, that potato mixture got uh, black pretty quickly. There was some squid ink added to that potato mixture, along with some egg. I hear that they might be making a, a roll or a gnocchi out of that, but I'm, I haven't seen it go there yet. So those are the pressure cooked potatoes that were run through the food mill. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Iron Chef Morimoto has planned for that mixture. Um, on the challenger side, Eric, one of uh, Tom Douglas' sous chefs, took some salmon bellies, lightly dusted them, and those will be seared off closer to the uh, end of the battle. Okay, so he dredged those in toasted rice flour. That'll add an interesting flavor to that salmon. So Chef Mark, with the, uh, with the blender, the mixer over there, has those uh, blanched fava beans, and he's uh, basically pureeing them with some olive oil and a little bit of water. Okay, thanks. Now, I think that that's a bottle of, uh, is that mushroom soy you're using there? Fish sauce. It is fish sauce. Couldn't see the label. Thank you, Chef. Fish sauce going into a bowl over at uh, Chef Douglas Station. He's getting ready to cut up some more limes. Limes and sugar, so he's making a bit of a, a, a syrup there. Wok chom. Wok chom with the fish sauce and the lime and the sugar, of course. Alton? Yes. So that, uh, that pureed salmon mixture right now is being handled by uh, sous chef Makoto on the Iron Chef side. He's wrapping up the puree mixture in uh, cabbage leaves. Well, so earlier we saw sous chef Makoto blanch that whole head of cabbage and make the uh, puree of salmon with heavy cream. And they're being passed over to the Iron Chef right now, it looks like. Nice. And it looks like the Iron Chef is working with the uh, salmon from the smoker. Uh, he's now slicing that very thin, is removing the skin as well. And uh, in Tom Douglas's side, there's that roasted side of salmon. Uh, my mouth's watering just looking at that thing. Iron Chef, Iron uh, Chef. Morimoto, he's working with that potato. I'm seeing him working with that potato squid yeah. dough. Sushi. He's handling that as if he was making a little piece of, uh, of, of sushi rice, the way he was shaping that, now laying that dough out. Obviously, that, that is just barely a dough, very, very soft. Basically, it's mashed potatoes. Over on the challenger side, uh, we've seen that side of salmon now go on top of that fried spine. So he is building he, a salmon. He's rebuilding. He's, he's making he's freaking fish. <laughs> I only the hope he doesn't bring it back to life. Yes. We can make it better. Those, uh, those cabbage rolled uh, pureed salmon have gone into the, the soup or the consomme in the casserole bowl on the Iron Chef side. So they're cooking away nicely in there. Well, he, he did say he was making a soup, and there it is, cabbage roll soup. Look at, the, look at the care that's going into to the way he's putting that dough. He's made like a little trench in the middle of it. So he's, he's filled it with some of that salmon puree. Wow, I, I've never seen that before. 
Okay, Morimoto uh, cutting those those rolls into uh, what would almost look like a gnocchi, almost. Although I'm, I'm certain that there's a Japanese name for it. I just don't know what it is. I, I'm certain that he's going to, to boil them or simmer them so that they'll set up. Now, uh, poached eggs are being created on the challenger side right now. Five to six poached eggs in the skillet. Okay, I saw him delicately uh, cracking those eggs earlier. And that uh, crispy salmon skin that the challenger was working on has now come out of the oven. Crispy okay, salmon skin, skin. yeah. Hopefully he's going to wrap up his frankenfish with that. Those collars from the salmon are still in the salamander. Still under the salamander? Yeah. You know, he said 30 seconds on those a little while ago. I wonder if uh, perhaps, I don't think he looks real happy with the doneness on that. Oh, those look pretty. Oh, those look pretty. He, he contradicts me at every turn. <laughs> the man's a master of marketing. He mocks you. He mocks me. Kevin, you're over on Morimoto's Kitchen, aren't you? Yes, sir. There's a, he, I see him ladling over that piece of salmon, but what is that salmon laid on? Alvin, it's thinly sliced sheets of wood. What kind of wood? It's, it's cedar wood, so he's it's using cedar. the world's okay. thinnest cedar plank. And so he's cooking it by just taking the hot oil from the wok and pouring it, slowly pouring it over the, the salmon. Well, that's certainly going to crisp up that skin, and you can hear uh, the, the sound that's coming from, from there. Chef Omai on the Iron Chef side making some uh, canals with puree of salmon. Well, he's certainly using a spoon as he would for a, a canal. Yeah, typically, that would be done from the spoon right into um, a, a simmering liquid. We'll have to see what he's going to do with that. Maybe he's going to wrap them up and, and steam them. Uh, Iron Chef Morimoto is still bathing that piece of uh, that large tranche of salmon with the uh, the oil from the wok. And you see that the, the fish is starting to curl up on the edges now, as is the, woods, uh, the, the, the world's thinnest piece of wood, which he has there. One of the uh, challenger sous chefs right there, Mark, was working with uh, some fresh vegetables, spring onion, red pepper, and ramps. We now have less than a quarter of an hour remaining in this battle, and both kitchens are tightening up. So now those canals of uh, pureed salmon that we were talking about, Elton, on the Iron Chef side have been added to that uh, casserole dish as well with those pureed cabbage leaf rolled wraps. Wow, a darn fascinating dish. Uh, the Iron Chef also has a salmon-filled potato gnocchi, uh, some salmon simmering in the pressure cooker, and he's still ladling that hot oil over some salmon ejected with truffle juice. The challenger now has some poached egg. And he also has some flour dusted salmon standing by to be seared. And uh, his large piece of roasted salmon is out uh, and laying on that fried salmon skeleton. Good gracious. There's only one way to find out how all this is going to end. Stay tuned for more Iron Chef America. Welcome back to Iron Chef America. Things are heating up here in Kitchen Stadium. With only 10 minutes left in the battle, here is what we know. In the Iron Chef's kitchen, some spinach was steamed and some rice came out of the rice cooker. Also, the salmon that was in the pressure cooker was moved to the stovetop and finished in a consomme. Chef Douglas's salmon collars are out of the salamander, and some more salmon pieces are sitting in some butter and sea salt near the stove, waiting for their final destination. Now, as we can see, Chef Douglas already plating. His, uh, his franken salmon is, is coming together nicely on his also got some uh, some lettuce and other herbs out on uh, on another serving piece, and we still have nine minutes left in the battle. Tom Douglas moments ago took out some uh, some roasted green coconut shells out of the oven. Well, you know, he could be using those as some sort of serving vessel. Your Iron Chef Morimoto was still working with that piece of salmon. You'll notice how he's only pouring the, the hot oil only over the skin. He wants the crispy skin. He doesn't want the, the flesh of the fish to be cooked. He called it his version of a Peking duck. Okay. He can call it whatever he likes, and he didn't have to blow anything up with air. I get the yuzu in broth. How much? Foam it. Wow, look at Iron Chef Morimoto go. He is really sweating, ladling that very hot oil. You can see his arm trembling, even switching hands to shake off the fatigue. All the while, though, he is keeping his team on track. A true master in the kitchen. Uh, the challenger, Tom Douglas, uh, he's got some uh, some fresh chives over there. You can see the blossoms hanging fat on the end of those thin stalks. We noticed Chef Makoto next to the Iron Chef working with the hand mixer. He was pureeing some yuzu and some gelatin. Iron Chef Morimoto now uh, disassembling or removing that uh, oil-cooked salmon that he's been working so hard on from that extraordinarily thin piece of cedar. And see that it's perfectly done. Beautiful cooking job on that. Morimoto clearly very, very happy with that. 
Kevin, get us caught up, please. Uh, different strategy for the Iron Chef, sort of plating from the center station. Chef Omai taking care of a lot of that. There's one beautiful dish. It's smoked salmon and caviar right next to those little gnocchis. So it looks like they did do a quick boil on the gnocchi to set it. Uh, looking over to Chef Douglas's kitchen, I, I've got to catch up with him. Uh, right now he's plating that poached egg and fava bean puree. Uh, the pearwood smoked salmon is there with a few more favas and some onion. And he already has these salmon collars from the salamander down on that plate with the uh, chive garnish. Uh, there's the blood orange next to it. A very interesting dish to, to look at. He is really cranking. Two minutes. Yeah, one of the great dangers here at Kitchen Stadium when it comes to timing is being too fast. Okay, yeah, wait, wait till uh, two minutes on that. You certainly want to, uh, to to be careful about that. Well, man, no, no, no. It's too soon to plate the ice cream. Wait another minute. Again, Omai and Makoto are working on some of the platings from that center station. We have some uh, sushi rice going down, and I think that's going to be the base for that uh, pressure cooker salmon, that braised salmon that we saw. So that's not quite fully plated yet. I will check back in on, on that in a second. Uh, Chef Douglas still working very fast. I uh, can barely keep up with him here. Uh, he's also plated his cured salmon, the one in the salt, pepper, uh, brown sugar curing mix. Um, it's there peeking out from uh, beneath the yogurt mixture, and that is where the salmon skin ended up. Uh, Iron Chef Morimoto has ladled that soup from the casserole dish. Uh, that was the broth cooked with the uh, bacon and salmon for flavor. Uh, in there are the salmon puree canals, uh, the puree filled cabbage rolls, and some veggies too. Uh, Chef Douglas with another plating. I think that's right. Uh, which is that uh, toasted cardamom, the star anise that we saw him toasting earlier. Uh, and that's being used as a bed for what appears to be uh, that coconut shell, um, the roasted coconut shell, which is filled with, I'm trying to get my eyes in there, it's asparagus, uh, those, those ramps, which of course the wild leek uh, and red bell peppers are in there right now. He'll be adding the broth to that, I imagine, at the very, very last minute. Over on the Iron Chef side, Chef Omai now working with that uh, beet sorbet. Okay, there is the beet sorbet. Bright pink, almost purple. The texture looks just right on that. Very fine crystal formation, very creamy looking. Be interesting to see what it's going to be doing with that. I can only hope that it's going to be going with that cured salmon. Four, five. Now, uh, Tom Douglas, uh, he seems to be uh, exactly where he wants to be, and very comfortable in his accomplishments. Uh, so he's already up to five platings, or partial platings at least, uh, looking really good. Iron Chef Morimoto finishing off that candied salmon and uh, beet canal with some beautiful, it's a, a yuzu foam. Yuzu foam. That was uh, what we saw getting made a bit earlier. Okay, so he did pair the uh, branded salmon with the beet oh, no. sorbet. Now looking at this plating that he's doing now uh, with uh, those beautiful Three greens. to go. Underneath the salmon, this beautiful plate on top of the uh, steamed rice and spinach his sous chefs uh, were working with before. In fact, that salmon uh, is the pressure cooker, braised salmon. He just poured some of that consomme on there. That looks really good. Uh, and we're looking at two minutes and 50 seconds left in battle salmon today. Uh, so Chef Morimoto, our Chef Morimoto, has plated the soup with cabbage rolls. The salmon, what I'm calling dessert, uh, it's the sugar cured salmon paired with the beet sorbet, uh, the salmon yoke, uh, Peking duck style salmon, and now the braised salmon with rice and spinach. Uh, Tom Douglas back uh, on that coconut shell dish. He is now ladling his soup into that coconut shell. That is the broth that had the uh, galangal, the lemongrass, and the salmon heads in it. We still have salmon cooking on the Challenger side. The, the, the butter, we have some butter poached salmon and we have that seared uh, flour dusted salmon that Eric is working with right now. They're still cooking. Cutting it close, but fish, you know, generally cook quickly. Uh, we, I do believe that the, uh, the, the, the little greens that we see tossed on Morimoto's side uh, on that one plate, one minute, we're, we're under one minute, is, is that infused uh, uh, salmon that we saw him, him inject with that, uh, that truffle juice. Uh, Chef Douglas has the butter poached salmon under that salad garnish. Uh, see what other dishes does he have? Well, we have, fr we have frank and salmon. We have the, there are the little pieces of his uh, uh, quick cured salmon right there. Yep. Uh, the toasted rice flour salmon uh, that we just saw, the smoked salmon, the salmon collars, and that butter poached salmon. That's actually six dishes on the challenger side. Very brave man. 30 seconds to go. Let's check Morimoto's plates very quickly. Uh, do us a count there. I think Wait. I see five down. We have five down. Very Beautiful. delicate, very pretty plates. Uh, Tom Douglas taking a bit more of a, a wholehearty approach there. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's a, well, we've got two very different approaches in plating. One is austere and clean, and the other looks like a mad scientist has been cooking. And, and I'm thinking that maybe that's what Tom Douglas is. Three, two, one. Put it down and walk away, cooks. Battle salmon is history. Just walk away. Just
time to shake, hug, and make nice. <laughs> well, Battle Salmon is over. Judgment time approaches on Iron Chef America. Judgment time is upon us, and uh, I do not envy the judges this day. Of course, we have some rules about how the scoring works, and to explain the scoring, Kevin Brosh. Absolutely, Elton. Hi, everyone. Here's how it all goes down. Each judge can award a chef up to 20 points total, with 10 points possible for taste, 5 points for plating design, how they've laid out their food for presentation to the judges, and as many as 5 points for the originality and the use of today's secret ingredient. May the best chef prevail. Thanks, Kevin. I think we get it. Now let's go straight away to the chairman and get the judging underway. Chef Douglas, congratulations. Thank you so much. Can you tell us what your approach to today's secret ingredient was? Well, I come from the land of salmon, and uh, everything about salmon is you want to celebrate the beauty. My job is to get out of the way of the fish, you know, let the fish shine. So that's really what we tried to do. Excellent. Shall we begin? Absolutely. And would you tell us, please, about the first dish? So this is just a little amuse, or just a little starter to celebrate what I just said, just the, the glory of the fish. It's simply been lightly poached in butter with a little sea salt, and you can squeeze lemon if you like, but uh, that's all it is. Just a matter of, I wanted to get a taste of what real salmon is. Yes, um, thank you very much. This is so clean, and um, I was able to taste really uh, salmon. The only thing is that it's a little um, too firm. I personally prefer sort of um, medium rare or Just even right. Yeah, I agree. I think it is a beautiful way to first let us taste your dish. Start off with the simple preparation. Mine was a little overcooked. Well, I think it's unanimous. It's a little overcooked. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I think it's a good dish overall. Thank you. Chef Douglas. So what we have here is a little quick cured salmon. Uh, it's got a little bit of shiso yogurt. And then we've taken the skin of the salmon and we've baked it with furry yaki, uh, furry kaki, excuse me. This is fabulous. It was a kaleidoscope of flavors and textures all exploding and coming together with the slippery salmon. And then this is almost like a flatbread with everything on it, which was wonderful, salty crunch. It's really a lovely dish. Thank you. Yeah, um, I also really loved uh, the concentrated flavors, especially on this um, salmon skin. Mm -hmm. And also the refreshing yogurt. It's perfect. Thank you. This is the salmon collar. Uh, I broil it simply with, uh, it has a little fresh ginger juice, a little orange peel, and a little of our Washington Chardonnay. Uh, also, uh, I put on some blood orange just to clean the palate a bit. I really like the flavors of this dish. I almost feel like by the texture I'm eating roast beef. You know, it just falls apart. It's beautiful. And the blood orange really adds a whole other element. Love the fact you use the collar because I truly think that's an underutilized portion of salmon that people just don't use. I thought it was cooked beautifully, and again, you know, kudos to you for using that part of the salmon. Chef, shall we move on? Yes. So we have a little young coconut milk curry, uh, just a real light broth. Again, we want to focus on, this, on the fish, and that's really the key here. We've taken rice flour and toasted it a bit brown so that when we sauteed our fish, it uh, added just a touch of flavor to it. So then uh, just a light curry broth, and like I said, the only thing in the broth is coconut milk. I really don't want to quit eating it. It's so good. I really like it. Um, the salmon has really taken on a nice flavor with the toasted rice flour. It's just, to me, perfect. Thank you. I agree. Um, everything, all the flavors exploded. Although some was a little bit, you know, again, uh, too firm. I would say that's one of the difficulties of Kitchen Stadium is <laughs> right. keep things at that medium rare to rare point. But we try. <laughs> we persevere. Chef Douglas. Absolutely. I couldn't do it. A, 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 iron kitchen without doing a little bit of smoked salmon. Uh, so this is just lightly smoked over pear wood and uh, we had just a touch of sugar and salt in the cure and then uh, just a lightly uh, poached egg. It's gooey. <laughs> Often in Seattle you see uh, smoked salmon on breakfast menus with eggs. It's, it seems to be a natural fit for us. That was going to be my comment that yeah. it reminds me of sort of the bacon egg with that great smoky flavor. You could smell it when it came to the table and that egg gooed beautifully, so it was wonderful breakfast. Clever concept. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is our final dish, and it's a whole salmon. Uh, we, or actually, it's not really, it's only a half, but I've fried the whole skeleton. We've got a half of salmon there. And then, uh, Chairman, if you don't mind, I'm going to show uh, little Vietnamese-style lettuce cups. You can put some sprouts, a little carrot. Uh, we have basil or mint. And then uh, a piece of the belly meat of the salmon right in here. 
little nuoc cham and some toasted peanuts and then make yourself a nice little cluck into the mouth. There you go. First of all, I like the texture, the bean sprouts and also simply baked. This is great. I really like it. I'll agree. <laughs> I've actually traveled to Vietnam. I love these salad bundles. They remind me of the freshness of, of what's in season and the crisp bean sprouts and the sweetness of the carrots and the, the herbs are essential. So well, it you. was great. Thank you, thank you. Excellent job, Chef Douglas. Thank you very much. Very, very impressive. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I'm Chef Morimoto. Always such a pleasure and honor thank to you watch your work. Thank you. Can you please tell us what your theme was for today's secret ingredient? Ah, well, this is very fresh salmon, and it's high quality, so I decided to make salmon in several different ways to showcase its various textures. Iron Chef? So this is the first uh, course. Now, this is our first course. On the right side, I made a potato roll. Instead of using rice, I, I used potatoes. Inside is a salmon puree, and the sauce is olive oil and soy sauce. On the left side is cold smoked salmon and yuzu dressing. Well, there's also caviar. Enjoy. That was delicious. <laughs> It was so silken, it just melted in your mouth and the herbs added a piquancy and the yuzu was creamy but had a little of that acid. And so that was a wonderful way to showcase the smokiness of that salmon. So creative, uh, really worked. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I liked it. I'm, I'm kind of back and forth on it. I thought the potato, it, it seemed kind of dense around this really light, silky salmon mousse. I thought your smoked salmon was absolutely fantastic. It just felt like butter in my mouth. So I agree with that. Thank you. Th that was really perfect. I agree. Um, the smoked salmon, it's a um, perfect texture. It was really melting in my mouth. Um, I loved it. Thank you very much. Iron Chef? Uh, this is a second dish. Ah, for my second dish, I made the salmon using a Chinese technique. It is Peking duck style. I poured hot oil over the skin to make it crispy. The salmon is cooked medium along the edges, then medium rare to rare as you get to the center. I also injected the salmon with truffle oil, soy sauce, and garlic. I thought that the labor that came out watching you over there, and I noticed the beads of sweat on your forehead as you really took such care cooking that came through with how perfectly cooked this is, and you really showcased the way the salmon should be. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the um, crispness of the skin and also the graduation of um, different texture, the medium, medium rare, and it is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, is the, my third, uh, this is my third course, salmon soup with spring vegetables, bamboo shoots, potatoes and carrots. There is also bacon flavor and olive oil. The broth is consomme and dashi. The dumplings are a smoked salmon puree, potatoes and heavy cream. There's also a salmon puree in the cabbage roll. Enjoy. This reminds me of a Japanese style New England boiled dinner in a way because you have the cabbage and the potatoes and the broth. Like and it, Odin, Odin style. <laughs> Odin style, yeah. It's pretty. It's it's light, and you can taste the contrast of the two salmons. One does have more of that roasted flavor, and it is fluffy. So um, this really achieves what you had set out to do. Thank you very much. This is what I would imagine comfort food in Japan to taste like. Just something about it. It it's, feels so comforting and warm and inviting. Also, the contrast and the flavors between the two different salmons. So I thought it was really good. Thank you. Next course, please. Thank you. This salmon. Uh, for this course, I used salmon cooked in the pressure cooker. There is rice and here we go. I'm adding the soy sauce. There is spinach and other spring vegetables in it. Sesame seeds have also been added. I think this is my favorite dish that you've made. Everything about it is really terrific. The sound, the smell, the rice with the spinach and the salmon all together, plus the toasty sesame seed flavor. It's just totally complements all of the elements of the dish. Um, it's really quite fantastic. Thank you very much. This is such a rustic, um, simple dish, but this is a star. Thank you very much. Iron Chef. So this is the last course dessert. So this course is dessert, my biggest challenge today. I decided to make a beet sorbet. There is a yuzu foam around it, and the salmon has just a little salt and some cognac brandy, sugar, and ginger. And I finished it with a little mint oil. Please enjoy. This, um, I like the beet sorbet because it's so earthy. You can really smell 
and taste the earthiness. That gives a really great balance with the salmon, but this is um, surprisingly so creative and um, good dish. I like it. Thank you very much. I'm totally torn about this dish. On the one hand, part of me thinks I got the chewiness of the salmon and I could taste it a little bit and then I thought, well, maybe maybe it's a little more like a candy ginger. Mm -hmm. And then I thought the yuzu was very important because that helped bridge me into the dessert flavor, particularly with the beet, because I actually could taste the beet flavor. Wildly creative, wildly creative, and I take my hat off to you for trying something like this. The verdict when Iron Chef America returns. Welcome back, food fans, to uh, Kitchen Stadium. Uh, the smoke has cleared. The judges have done their tasting. They have deliberated. They now have a decision. Now, remember, there are 20 possible points here, 10 possible points for the uh, flavor of the dish, another five for the presentation, and a final five for originality. Now, let's go up and find out uh, whose cuisine reigns supreme from the chairman. Today, two champions met in battle salmon here in Kitchen Stadium. Chef Morimoto. Chef Douglas. The judges have spoken. And the winner is... Chef Douglas. Sometimes you just can't guess the outcome of these competitions. This one was clearly a very close call. It was decided in the taste category. Uh, I was curious to see how each of the judges voted. As you can see, only one of the judges clearly preferred the uh, taste of Chef Douglas's dishes. But because we tally the points and high score wins, today the challenger has prevailed. But rest assured, there are no losers in this situation. That's because at Kitchen Stadium, losers never even get in the door. Just thought you ought to know. Uh, on behalf of uh, the chairman, Kevin Brosh, and the entire staff here at Kitchen Stadium, I'm Alton Brown, bidding you good evening.